Now let's look at step eight, configuring user shares. Unraid has a unique way of sharing itself over the network using what it calls user shares. User shares are different than just a standard share uh, because as you'll see in just a few moments, uh, Unraid does share each individual drive over the network and that's pretty unique in itself. However, when you create a user share, it will basically span that share over as many hard drives as are necessary in order to hold the data. So that could be on any one of those drives plus the parity drive. So in this case, we're just going to set up a basic user share. So what we have to do is stop the array first because we can't activate sharing until we stop the array. Once we've stopped that, we can go up to shares and we can enable user shares. Very, very simple. Now back at the main panel, we need to restart that array so that we can create a new user share. Now that user shares are enabled on your Unraid server, all you have to do is go back to the shares tab and you'll see that user shares is now available. So we're going to create a share called backup. So that is what it's actually going to be shared as on your Samba or Windows uh, network. So when you go to slash slash Unraid or slash slash tower, uh, you're going to be able to see the backup share and that share is going to span multiple drives. I'm going to call this uh, data backup as far as my comments are concerned. Allocation method could be either high water or most free. In either case, what high water is going to do is it's going to just find a drive that has enough space uh, that it's going to be able to store whatever you're transferring over to it. On the other hand, most space is going to automatically use the drive that has the most available space. The reason that I'm choosing high water is because I don't necessarily always want my biggest drive to be the one in use. Because remember, I've got a 160 and a 400 gig. So if I set it to most space, it's generally going to always be my 400 gig that's going to be used until it gets to the point where there's only 150 gigs left. Um, so I'm going to use high water in this case. Split level, we want to set to one. If we set it to zero, it's always going to keep all of the files on the same disk. In order to tweak split level, we really have to understand how it works. So let's use my E drive as just an example here. This is just a drive in my computer that I use to store some of my temporary files. So think of E colon slash as our backup share. This is the top level of that share. So we'll call that split level zero. In that case, if split level were set to zero, all of these folders would be forced to be stored on one hard drive. If, however, split level were set to one on our Unraid server for this share, then this folder would be permitted to be stored on a separate hard drive than this folder, and so on and so forth. If we go one deeper, so now, okay, we're in our videos folder, our video folder, and then if I go into the meat folder, now we're at split level two. So this can now be on a different hard drive than this, and so on and so forth. So, of course, if you would like to have split level so that your, your files can end up on any of the hard drives and it doesn't really matter to you, you could set it something absurd like 999. Reason you might want to have it set as zero is say you want to have all of your pictures stored on one disk so that you can inevitably turn off your Unraid server, take out that disk, put it in another computer and you've got access to it. So that's when you'd want it to be zero. We want to set it to one so that again, this backup, uh, this backup share will span multiple disks. Other than that, everything can remain the same uh, because, again, we're just setting up a basic user share and we can just hit add share and that's going to activate that. Now that our user share backup has been created, we're going to see here that our capacity on disk 1 is 149 gigs, disk 2 is 372 gigs, but then if we go to our backup share, watch this. As could be expected, our backup share has a capacity of 521 gigs. So as we continually add new hard drives, that backup share is going to be expanded and receive more space based on the size of the drive that we add to the array. So just as a test, we'll just throw a couple of files on here and see how it works. Everything is just working just fine and uh, as should be expected. You can see as I refresh here that as the disk, as disk 2 is being written to, as I copy files over to backup, the parity drive is also being written to at the same time. That's the parity data. That's the information so that if that disk 2 ever crashes, even during this process, I've got a backup copy on that parity drive, so to speak. I'm using lay terms just so that it makes, it makes sense, but uh, basically if that drive 2 crashes, parity drive is going to be able to restore to a new drive.